drought approaching. Okay. We need more cassavas and canola. No, cassavas and soybeans. Do I really need more of it though? I actually don't have that much food. I mean, I have lots of blueberries, but that's about it. I'm gonna start replacing these trees over here, I think. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna... Remove these... No, we're gonna remove these trees over here. And then we're gonna plant down... Either soybeans or cassava. Yeah, the 5G towers do burn through the science, that's true. Just like in real life. Okay. Yeah, these things consume science at three an hour. Pretty quick, actually. <laughs> yep, and then I want you guys Planting down some more cassava and then some more soybean here as well eventually. I think I'm gonna destroy this builder hut over here because it's kind of in the way and I'll create like a temporary outpost area over here So we'll do another hauling post And then we'll also do another builders hut right over here Although I don't remember where the builder hut is at ah right next to the other one sweet Okay. 29 happiness? Dude, that's a lot of happiness, though. Pretty awesome. How much happiness are you at, chat? 29? Would you say it's a 29 or a 28 type of day? You're at 69 right now? Not bad, dude. Have you been enjoying your campfires, rooftop terraces, your shrubs? Do you have wet fur belly? Because they do love wet fur. Have you taken a mud bath recently? Oh. Oh wow, they actually fly pretty high up. <laughs> Dude, that seems so fun. I don't know how safe this is though, because what if you move too close to the edge? You're on vacation? Ooh, nice, Nolan. I didn't think you were gonna be able to watch, but, uh... Very cool. Hope you're enjoying yourself. I have never been to an indoor skydiving place. No, I know there are some nearby, but... Or there's at least one that I know of. In Utrecht, but I'm not sure. This is gonna be a double dynamite kind of thing. Although I don't know about the edge. What if you put double dynamite on the edge? Does the water flow out of the map? I guess we'll have to find out. You need to recover from sunburns? 
Oh, you actually do flow it out of the map? Okay, okay. No, we don't want to do that in that case. Yeah, sunburns are not a great idea. Oh. A drought has begun. Okay. Gonna be some big explosions. A lot of beavers are still getting injured all of the time. Wait, it's still... Wow. I actually thought this was going to be reachable for sure. Yeah, we're going to get a big explosion here, Merlene. Like the 4th of July, you know? Globally. Everybody loves the 4th of July. Okay. Oh, we have still a couple to go. Yeah, there's still a couple over here that I need to do. Oh, I missed a spot over there too, yeah. <laughs> you missed a spot. You're right. We'll do it at normal speed. Here we go. I am starting... Over here. Happy 4th of July, everybody. Very nice. Happy New Year. No, 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 4th of July, dude. The hell? New Year. Nice ASMR. Thanks, dude. Happy birthday, Loco. <laughs> Thanks, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is where the uh, the dynamite needs to go. Pretty much the edge of the world. It's Loco's birthday again? Yeah, yeah, just like last Saturday. Oh, happy birthday, Loco. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you all. It's almost noon in California time, and you're still online? Uh, normally I think I start at like 7 in the morning in California, I think. So I guess I should normally be live at this hour of the day, yeah. I look like I'm 21. I'm 31, dude. I am... Officially old. I start at 6 a.m.? Oh wait. Normally I start at 5 a.m. and now I start at 6 a.m.? Ah, okay, okay. I don't look a day past 16. Oh, thanks, guys. Have you seen my gray hair, though? Let me show off my gray hair. You seeing all this shit over here? Ay, 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 ay. That's basically ancient, Rumpus. 
That's how it starts. Absolutely. What do you have to be stressed out about? You, Grimdy. Every time I play against the Skytles, I grow gray hair. I should, t yeah, I should write my will. Absolutely. Who gets the yacht? Who gets the jet ski? The private plane? You know, that sort of thing. Okay. An unemployed robot. Time to dye your hair? Nah. Is stress really a reason to grow gray hair? I think I used to be a lot more stressed. I try to take it a little more chill these days. I don't know. I have a tendency to put myself under far more stress than I need to. It's a bit more, a bit of a classic. Yeah. Like, I have to do this in the morning, and then I have to go to the gym, and then I have to make a video, and then I have to be live at 2 p.m., and I have to stream. Like, you know, I set these, like, I don't know, self-imposed rules for, for no apparent reason, really. But I still do quite a lot of that. But some people, yeah, exactly. Some people have gray hair by the time they're, like, 20. Your wife pulls the gray hair out of your head? Yeah, that's a great build order for a short amount of time, though. <laughs> that seems like a bad long-term solution. It's all good, dude. Nah, my dad has fully grayed out hair. It's pretty much white. It's actually my dad's birthday today. Unironically, not my birthday. <laughs> but it is my dad's birthday. <sighs> Old co. Yeah, yeah. My birthday is the same day as my dad. Sure, sure. What are the odds, huh? Really have to aim for that one. You believe the hype? Ah, it's okay, Isaac. People believe it's my birthday about twice a week on, on stream. So now I'm going to be dying in the amount of dynamite I'm going to have. Do, do, do. That's true, though. Yeah, I am, I am familiar with the birthday paradox. The birthday paradox is actually kind of nuts. The odds of people sharing birthdays are actually much higher than you'd imagine it is. It feels wrong, you know? Like, you know, like when you were in school, the odds of somebody having a, same, a similar birthday in your class, like any two people in your class sharing a birthday, were actually significant. I don't know the exact math. But if you do the math, 
And you calculate the probability of two people sharing a birthday? Yeah. When you have a group of just 23 people together... The fact of the matter is that there is a 50% chance, assuming that everybody is born equally on every 365 days, right? Which is not the case, but... Um, the fact that, like, 50% of people share a birthday would only... Or, sorry, the probability that two people out of a group of 23 share a birthday is at 50% with a group of only that many. Which is kind of nuts. You've never met anybody who shared a birthday with you, Watopia? Mate, there's got to be somebody watching right now that shares the same birthday as you. Oh, it's April 1st! Sure. Sure, Watopia. Mm-hmm. All right, Watopia. Maybe he only knows 10 people. That could be. What's going on, Slick Noob? You're catching me as I'm just about to head off. <laughs> but hello. <laughs> yeah, even Watopia's mom thinks he's a joke, dude. It's kind of mean, but... Yeah, it is what it is, Watopia. To the ah, born on the first of April. I'll be live again in 18 hours, slick noob. Set an alarm. Set an alarm. I'll be live here in 18 hours. <laughs> Okay, all of this is done. Awesome, man. This turned out very well. I may need a second uh, forester and maybe a couple more woodcutting bots over here, but this is, I think, woodcutting for basically the remainder of this playthrough. I actually made a lot of progress today. Even though, the f yeah, I spent like hours trying to fix this freaking water wheel situation. Managed to get it done. I don't think it really was necessary, but managed to get it done. I could add, I could definitely add some more, by the way, now that I'm looking at it. I know that's a risky uh, idea, but like I could definitely fit a couple more in here. Maybe I could even fit four more. No, if I'm gonna fit more, I'm gonna fit two. I'm not gonna try and squeeze four more in this freaking river, man. But we can maybe do like a, a couple in a row. And then we can generate a lot of power with that. Did she say any of this? Yeah. All of it, actually. Guys, look at this. This only took me about two hours of gameplay yesterday. Well worth it, eh? Yeah, only about two hours. Um, we are slowly getting to the point where our where we are replacing all of the beavers with robots. We've learned that robots are superior in pretty much every way. Here's one thing, for example, that robots don't need. Food and water. Yeah, they don't need recreation. All they need to do is just chill and charge up every once in a while and then work 24 hours. We haven't made any beaver jokes yet today. No. Does anybody have any beaver suggestions? I feel like I've heard every single beaver pun at this point, though. Thinking about doing another one of these charging stations, because clearly this guy is not getting it done fast enough. Um, that doesn't work. I need to have electricity for these things. Save a tree, eat a beaver. That's beautiful, man. Can you guys reach that? Nah, they can definitely reach that. What's good on Mousy? Hello, hello. 
Dude, I'm actually getting tilted about the idea of having to wait at the airport for that long. I feel... I <laughs> the fact that they, they tried to, like, blame this on you, Echo, kind of grinds my gears a little bit, man. This is a bit of a complex setup over here to get... Uh, anyways, another charger. Loka, are you a beaver? Because damn! There it is. Very nice. What did the beaver say to the tree? Nice gnawing you? These sound like AI jokes, guys. I think we can do better than AI jokes. So wait, did you just get home then? After traveling 58 hours? I guess you did, huh? Yesterday night, you have slept? Okay, okay. That's a bit of a yikes, though. Bam, 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 bam. I see a lot of um, uncharged. What are they called? Uncharged uh, be or robots. We need loads of them. I do. I have two unemployed robots right now. Yeah, I'm very happy with how the city is turning out, actually. Can I actually just put down one of these things right over here? I'm gonna give that a try. What if I put down... One little charging station right up here. Unemployed robots. Do I pay them? Absolutely not. What does a French beaver call their home? Madame? Hey. What's a beaver's favorite artist? Justin Beaver? Why did the beaver become a great construction worker? Because he knew how to dam up any problems? Oh. Hey, that works. Sweet. Sweet. So basically what you're saying, Barnacle, is that that AI joke you just made is as good as the jokes that Twitch chat made? Hmm. Hmm, I find that a little suspicious. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Are you guys real? Yes, Mr. Destructoid? Hmm, okay, okay, well then it must be right. Low jam, low jam, only one month and I'm sub for one year. What is going on, Pingu? Thank you. I'm actually pretty happy with how this is all going, guys. We have solved pretty much all the problems, it seems. Oh, one of the problems that we have is the metal not being within range over here. That is something I should solve. Yeah, problem here is that all of this is a bit of a mess. So I guess we'll do some dynamite over here as well. Just so we can actually harvest all of it. Um, we'll do some dynamite over here too for the same reasoning. I've got loads of dynamite now. It's pretty hype. It's pretty hype. There we go. I increased my dynamite production right after I didn't really need any additional dynamite. Which is always a good order to do things. Okay. Put a few staircases over here. Nope. 
Mm -mm 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 -mm. At what point are you allowed to go full Karen at an airport, guys? Like, what are- I don't know what the rules are, you know? Like, are you allowed to just... Be a jerk when they force you to redo your flight? Never go full Karen? Nah, I guess not. Once they waste more time than the flight would take? Hmm. Somewhere between a normal trip and what Echo just went through? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Somewhere in the middle of that. <laughs> you need to be clear that you don't accept the provided solution? Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be a Karen in moderation. I think that's reasonable. Um, I think I want to do more and more jobs right now with, honestly, the hauling post would be kind of nice. Can I do the hauling post with robots instead? This is a lot of, uh, oh my God, I actually have so many already. There we go. This means that I currently have a bunch of vacancies for them, but... The US is actually instituting rules that make airlines pay significant fines and penalties to travelers? Yeah. No, I think it's similar over in, in the greatest country of the Netherlands, too. I don't really know exactly what the rules are, but I do know they have to compensate you if they screw you over. No, the Netherlands, the Netherlands 2, double O, double O. Yeah, is it a business strategy for companies to just make it look like it's the customer's fault? Just in the off chance that the customer will accept the solution that, you know, they provide? It's a very dickish thing to move, to do, but I, I I wouldn't be surprised. If the Netherlands is so good, why isn't there a Netherlands 2? There used to be. But we sold that to the Brits. <laughs> it's not our proudest moment for what it's worth, but... And then the Americans stole it? Oof, oof, I don't know, man. Unruly colonists. <laughs> 32 happiness? That's pretty sick. Happiness is no longer a problem, though, if there are no beavers. Is this not reachable? How is this not reachable? Oh, I need a little path right over here. I was going to say, something is very, very wrong. There we go. Now it should be easily reachable. If the USA is so great, why does USB exist? <laughs> Got him, dude. Checkmate. Universal serial bus? Universal serial... I don't know what the A stands for. America. Airline cancellation and delay dashboard? Oh, here we go. Dude, there's a whole website with an exact overview. Obviously, it depends on the airline you flew with, but... Frequent flyer miles when delay results in passengers waiting three more hours? <laughs> Considering you had to wait another... What was it? 34 hours or whatever? Yeah, I think you passed the three-hour mark. <laughs> I <laughs> There's a European rule as well. EU air okay. Traveling from the UK to an EU country. Oh, here we go. What went wrong? You were denied boarding. 
What did you want? You may be denied boarding, blah, blah, blah. If you have presented yourself in time for the check-in with a valid flight reservation and travel documentation and you're denied boarding by the airline due to overbooking, you are entitled to compensation, the right to choose between reimbursement, rerouting or rebooking at a later stage and assistance. Dude, you get a lot. The fact that they made, like they made you pay for the hotel. <laughs> That's fucking crazy, dude. They're like, sir, so what we did, you were waiting in line and we decided to give away your seats to other people, right? Because we held you up for such a long time. So what we've decided to do is give you nothing and we'll make you pay for the hotel. <laughs> Jeez. Well, thanks. That's uh, a dirty one, man. <sighs> Have a good day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get the honor of paying for your own hotel. Welcome to Houston, Texas. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Ay, ay, ay. You should have humped the anthem while you were online. Maybe they should have helped you quicker that way, you know? You're just standing in line, you just... <laughs> Maybe they would have actually... Let him through, let him through, let him through! They, they would have probably allowed you... ...to get to the front of the line. <laughs> this is why you're scared of flying, it's not the flight, but the dickhead airlines? To be fair, most of the time it goes well. Yeah, most of the time... Most of the time airplanes are pretty chill. I think flying is pretty fun. When it goes well. It's less fun when it doesn't. So what is this supposed to do, guys? A grease factory. A factory that produces slippery grease that makes bot machinery run smoother. So this basically is lube. Well, I gotta make that. For obvious reasons. Thank you, Lathrinus. Gifting a sub to Dave in. Ooh, there you go, dude. They did an over four hour delay and it should be a 400% of the one way fare. Considering you traveled from the US to Hungary. This should actually be quite the compensation, dude. Because those flights are not cheap. Four hundred percent compensation. Suddenly, suddenly, Echo Steel is seeing dollar signs. <laughs> Here comes the money. Here we go. I mean, it's worth a shot at the very least. Um, I want to go ahead and, um, they may take that thing, though. They may do that thing where they're like, well, you accepted the 25% hotel discount. So, you agree to our terms. You know, they may pull one of those, you know, tricky ones on you. Wouldn't be surprised. Pulling a bit of a sneaky one. Always fun. Are there lawyers in the chat? Of course, man. Twitch chat is an expert in everything. Medical advice, software engineering, lawyering, absolutely. What can Twitch chat do? I feel like that's a better question. 
Other than talk to girls. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, no, I see, I see. To be fair, girls are kind of scary. You work for the big U.S. airlines, and I do not appreciate when competitors try to be slick. Okay, we're making loads of loop now. I don't know what we do with it, but it gives me buffs, I think. A bot could be systematic, hydromatic. Why couldn't it be greased? Very good question, dude. Um, I guess I'm gonna store my grease somewhere. Uh, I don't know where, but... Bat tide is approaching. That's okay. Does mom count? As, as far as talking to girls go? Yeah, yeah, I talk to your mom all the time, dude. I think it counts. Sorry. So, it was too easy. It was... It... Where do I, uh, where do I store my, um... Oh, I store it in barrels. I'm gonna make a barrel. Sorry. I think I'm gonna store my barrel of lube right over here. The grease. There it is. I like how the community is trying to help out Echo Steel. I'm glad I'm not the only one that got triggered by his story. <laughs> Very nice. Us cheddar stick together. What's your problem? Dude, everybody's always injured in my colony somehow. Why do you guys keep getting injured? What am I doing wrong? Is it possible to avoid them getting injured? I don't know. Suddenly this airline receives 400 complaints on behalf of the chat. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do some mud baths. The only problem is I need to bring the electricity down for the mud baths as well. I kind of want to work with the terrain rather than just blasting everything with dynamite. So I'm gonna try and bring it somewhere where... Yeah, they can go a little further still. Eh, not too much though. There's these things called mud baths, which apparently they get very excited about. There's also the Motivarium, a mechanical theater that educates beavers on core Iron teeth values. Okay. Can I put the theater down here? I think so. Uh, I am going to do a little bit of dynamiting. I'm going to do some dynamiting over there. A little bit of dynamite over here. Loco, speaking of airlines, have you ride a Boeing airplane? Uh, yeah. Boeings are pretty common, right? Isn't that most planes? Most commercial airlines, anyways? I was on a Boeing the other day, and it did have both doors, which was kind of nice. I highly recommend having doors in your airplane, unlike that one that, you know, happened a little while ago. It did have all of its wheels as well, yeah. Ah, oh, snap. <laughs> um, I have a uh, bit of a problem over here right now. This is where my theater is supposed to go.
Maybe I should do my mud baths over here too. So say like we put this thing over here. And then we do our mud baths relatively close to it. So you can go to the theater after you take a nice cleansing mud bath. That sounds amazing. I'll cover up my, my mistake. And I kind of want to create a little bit of room over here for my theater to breathe. I don't know if this is reachable for them. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to also bring my electricity down. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. Oh, bat tight. Okay. Uh, no, this one has to empty. Yep, go ahead. Bring the bat tight. Six days. We can work with six days of bat tight. I actually have a, a load of airplane miles. I didn't realize that I had a whole load of them. <sighs> we were uh, talking about maybe going somewhere for like a summer holiday at some point in the next few months. So I have to get an ear operation in probably June. Which kind of sucks. But um... May actually end up using a bunch of the miles. I have quite a few of them. Another ear operation? Basically, dude, it sucks. Yeah. I haven't done an ear operation in quite a while now, but yeah. What's up with my ears? They're uh, anatomically F tier. Which is not ideal. But the doctor that I, uh, that, 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 yeah, that I'm, uh, gonna be operated by currently has a pretty long waiting list. Luckily, what I need to get done is not something they really need to rush, but it does need to be done within, like, the next year or so. So there's not really, like, a rush, but at the same time, it also, I shouldn't be waiting too long, if that makes any sense. The air operation is a bit of a scary one, though. Should go well, but, yeah. You have faith? I have faith too, man. Imagine never being able to hear Chet again. I know, dude. Now, the scariest part about the ear operation I need to get done is that they have to operate within, like, right, right behind your eardrum, right? There's, like, a little bit of space. And they have to, like, do a bunch of shit over there. But that is also basically where the nerve that controls that side of your face runs through. Now these days, apparently it's very safe. And uh, the odds of it getting hit are very low. But if they accidentally hit the, you know, the nerve that goes through your ear canal. It's better than dying. Yeah, it is better than dying. So I got that going for me. But yeah. So the doctor told me he does hundreds of these operations a year and he's never hit one. And then he knocked his desk, which I thought was kind of funny. He's like, yeah, I do hundreds of these every year and I've never hit that nerf. And then he, <laughs> he hit his desk. Not a very common Dutch gesture to do. Um, that was pretty funny. Oh yeah. We'll see how it goes. I already have a scar behind my ear, dude. So I got operated for the exact same thing when I was a teenager. And apparently back then what they did is they just prayed. They just looked at the CT scan and they're like, yep, I think the nerve's right over here. Let's just fucking go. Uh, apparently these days they actually purposely seek it out and they make sure that they don't hit it. I didn't know that this was a thing when I was a kid, though, when I got operated on it for the first time. So it didn't really it didn't really concern me back then, you know? Here's to Loco's hearing. 
Hear, hear, do not fear, your rear has nothing to fear, my dear. Thank you very much, Thunder General. Well said, dude. Here, here. Scar review? Well, I mean, it's not that exciting. <sighs> but yeah, that is probably gonna be sometime in June. Which I'm not too hyped for. But it'll be fine, I guess. The alternative is dying, so, you know, not too hyped for that either. I should do a GoFundMe? No, 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 it's fine. No pressure on the doctor. I mean, it's his job. <laughs> he decided to go and do this. How long is the healing process? Dude, I asked the doctor, right? I was like, yeah, so... He knows what I do for a living. I think he watched a bunch of my videos or something. Which is kind of funny. Anyways, um, I asked him, like, how long would I not be able to work for? And he was like, well... <clears throat> with all said and done, right? Assuming the operation goes according to plan, and he had a very serious face, it's like, yeah. I think you're gonna have to, like, um, take it very easy for about... Three days. <laughs> like, what, what are we even? What are we even discussing right now? You're saying three days? He's like, yeah, yeah. So basically, there's an appointment again, a couple weeks after the operation, and within about a month or so, you should feel 100% again, and you can fly and just do everything you ever done. I was like, dude, I thought, I, I, I had to laugh as well, and he kind of looked at me like, why are you laughing? I was like, well, I thought you were gonna say, you know, I, I wasn't gonna be able to do anything for like two months. He was like, no, 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 three days and you, you know, <laughs> this is really fine again. <laughs> so I'm probably not gonna stream for like a week and just take it super easy for a little while. That's, uh, that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, the way he said it made it sound like it was gonna be a long time, dude. No, I'm not gonna be able to wear headphones for quite a while. Because there's gonna be stitches, dude. Loco, what is wrong with your ears? Okay, I've already explained this a few times, but let me draw it out for you, okay? Here's my understanding of it. This is uh, art, so no copy-paste us. Here's, here's your ear, right over here. Look, this is an ear, right over here. It's got like the little flappy thingy right over here, right? And it's got like the thingy over here. There's like a bunch of shit going on. Nobody knows what this is for, right? Here's your ear canal. And then over here is your very smooth brain. Right? This is, it's tiny. It's, it's, you know, it's my brain. Very small. Um. There is a, this is, it's got a bunch of wrinkles. Yeah, but it's, it's tiny, so I, I don't really know if that, you know, works out in my favor. Let me, I need a little bit more space. We have a shorter ear canal now. I made the ear canal too long. Alright, it's a very straight ear canal too. Yeah, you have a curved ear canal, dude. That's kind of cringe. Anyways, um, ear canal. It ends over here with a little ear drum, right? This is the ear drum. Basically, sound goes through the thingy. And then there's a couple of bones over here that are like connected together. And they are connected with this thing that kind of looks like a snail. And basically, sound that comes in gets hit on the ear canal and then it like connects it over here to that snail looking device and the snail looking device basically connects it into your brain and then your brain interprets this as sound, right? This is normally what it's like. There's usually like a thingy that goes over here down to your nose. So this this is a nose right over here. It's a strange looking one, right? Um, usually there's like a tube that basically connects this in and then there's also a tube that connects it to your throat, right? Same, same situation. Anyways, um, that's why that's why the doctors that do these sort of things are ear, nose, and throat, because it's all one thing. Um, basically, long story short, there's a, what do you call this, like an infection for me that is right above my ear canal. And this shit over here doesn't really have a whole lot of places to go, other than like, for example, this way, that way, that way. It goes a bunch of different places. And at some point, it doesn't really have a lot of places to go anymore. 
So the place that it went to is right over here on my hearing bones and right over here on my whatever the fuck this is. This is bone. It's very porous. Anyways, basically this is where the infection goes and this is just a bunch of like skin and shit that has just been accumulating over time. Yeah, so it goes a bunch of different places. The problem is that it also has gone on top of these little hearing bones. So basically what the doctor needs to do is uh, take, I think, a vacuum cleaner and go through the ear canal as well as behind the ear canal. And he basically takes his vacuum cleaner and he fucking vacuums all of this up. And then he puts like basically, um, you know that like expanding stuff that they use to like fill in holes in your homes and stuff? He's gonna use that on my ear as well. So they're gonna fill up a bunch of this space over here. And then I think the idea is they're gonna put like a... Since my hearing bones will be gone and that would mean that I can't hear, which is not great. Um, they're gonna do like a artificial one that will connect the eardrum to that like snail thingamajig. So then hopefully I can hear. That would be nice. Yes, if this was done, if I was born pre-1950, 1950, 1950, so basically if I was born at any point in human history other than right now, basically what would happen is that at some point, this ear infection thingamajig, right, goes through your skull into your brain, which is not great. Um, now this is years away. This would take a very long time. But eventually that's where it would go. Which is not great. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah.